She looked up. She was like, sorry if I ain't doing a good job. I don't even really suck dick. I'm a lesbian. I was like, oh, shit. Crack is addictive. Welcome to This Is Not Happening. I'm Roy Wood Jr. We all come from somewhere, from someone who nurtures us, protects us, and teaches us. Some are better at it than others. Tell you about the very important day in my life. The day I found out my dad smoked crack. Some young, young dude, a couple years into my teens, naive. I ain't even cursed then. I still prayed before every meal. It's back when prayers were short. <laughs> Remember when you was young, how short prayers were? Before life kicked in and you needed to pray for more shit? <laughs> Back then, you know? Wholesome young man. Went to visit my dad, Athens, Georgia. I remember getting that phone call. I got excited. Cause I ain't seen my dad in two years. He was in a mental institution. He just got out. He was about to put the world on his ass. And he was like, yo, I'm out. Let's kick it. And I got excited. Went to Athens, Georgia. You know, he just got this brand new coupe, cougar, blue. It was dope as fuck. Plush, smelled like cigarettes. It was used as hell. <laughs> but it don't matter, cause he was fresh out of the mental home, you know? I remember when I seen the coupe, I was like, this shit about to be dope, he made plans. Anytime I make plans, a man make plans to kick it with his kids, that's special. Wait, we gonna go get something to eat? <laughs> we'll go to the movies. If you go to sleep early, I'm gonna get me some unsy, you know? <laughs> you know when dudes talk low like that, that's when all the fun shit happen? Like, I'm gonna drop you off, and I'm about to go get me some cocaine. You know? <laughs> when dudes start talking in wing dings, you know, and they start... I'm saying what the fuck we about to get into, nigga. Went in his pocket, pulled out $30, gave it to me. I was like, oh shit, this nigga doing it. <laughs> I ain't never had $30 before, you know what I mean? That's a lot of money for a nigga to just give somebody. That's how I felt, it just gave me $30, he doing it. Two bills, a 20 and a 10. <laughs> I was on top of the world. I put that shit in my pocket, Poof. gone, disappeared. We get in the car. About to go, all of a sudden, I see this zombie walking down the street. Like he just got bit, like a fresh zombie bite. Like a, <laughs> like he still can walk a little bit, but he's just got a limp. Not full zombie, but he like, Ugh. but like, like, you know, this is before I knew what a drug fiend was. You know, the guy just was stumbling like, uh, like help me, get up the street. He was one of those guys. Hey, Don, they're like, yo, what's up, man? Hey, run me up to the street. Nah, man, I can't run you up to the street today. I got my son with me. We're supposed to go to the movies. Man, come on, man. Run me up the street to show that house. You know we're going to go and get from my that motherfucker. <laughs> and I was like, oh, shit. Anytime, you know, you're a young kid and an adult come, you like, oh, you start to get a little jealous because, you know, whatever they wing dinging over there can get, throw me out the game. So we hop in the car. We go around the corner, right? place called Rock Springs. It's projects. But I ain't know at first. When we saw the buildings, I was like, nigga, is this the projects? So my instinct said, that's some real shit. Ain't nobody instincts politically correct. That motherfucker tell you straight like it is. Nigga, is this the projects? <laughs> I don't care what nationality is. You see something sketchy, your instinct's gonna be like, nigga, that motherfucker a rapist. <laughs> We went into this house next to the projects. Scary house. 
One of those houses where everything made noise when you got inside. Everything was scared. The door, the floor, the rug. The light was dim. The light was scared to go in that bitch. The light was creeping in like, what y'all niggas doing in here? And I'm like, man, get in there. I need you to see. Come on in. That's what the lady said. Come on in. Door. Yeah. Lady in the kitchen cooking. Dope. Crack. I don't know if you ever smelled crack before, but it smelled like aluminum foil taste. You ever taste aluminum foil? Never? You ain't never like try to get like a fake grill and put aluminum foil in your mouth? So you can stun on them hoes like nigga. Nigga. You ain't never did that. Just put that shit in your mouth, be like, nigga. Okay. Anyway, you know what I mean? You got that, got that taste to it. You taste it in the air like, oh shit. You know something wrong, even as a youth. The lady turned around. She was like, what, all y'all three of y'all want something? Dad was like, no, this is my son. And I was like, oh shit, how fucked up do I look? <laughs> well, she think I'm one of these dudes. That's when I was over. I'm like, man, I need to get out of here. And I looked, and there was a back door open, and it had a basketball right outside. And in the projects, they had a basketball court. So that was my excuse. It's like the universe was telling me, get the fuck out of here. So I was like, hey, dad, I want to go play basketball. And he was like, hey, why don't you go play basketball? Like it was his idea, like he thought of it. <laughs> so I grabbed the ball and I go outside and it was scary as shit because I had to cross the threshold into the projects. Now, if you don't live in the projects, you don't got no business in the goddamn projects. And the only people I knew that lived in the projects, one of them died. So who the fuck I'm gonna yell for? So I tried to be tough walking in the projects and go shoot basketball, but guess what? I can't play goddamn basketball. <laughs> I sucked that basketball. Got cut from everything I tried out for. And people looking at me like, who the fuck this nigga? Cause that's what they do when you walk in any hood. And they don't know you, they're like, who the fuck? is this motherfucker with these little ass shorts on. <laughs> I shoot a ball, air ball, miss. I just watch the ball just miss. And I'm like, oh shit, I'm about to get my ass whooped. I'm out there trying to shoot, I'm nervous. Anytime somebody make a move, I'm doing this. All of a sudden, my dad come outside. Hey, what's up, man? Oh, you playing basketball? Let me see that ball. Pang! He missed. But he didn't give a fuck about playing basketball. He just turned to me and I saw the look in his eyes and it was intense. It was intense. I ain't even recognizing. He was like, hey man, you got that $20 I gave you? And I was like, shit. Yeah, I got it, but that shit was deep. I'm not used to having $30. I'm giving this dude 75% of my money. I don't even know if it's 75%. Because I ain't never had 30 goddamn dollars before to even do the math. And I reached in there, that shit was folded so tight, like them last two pieces of toilet paper. You know how you fold that shit? <laughs> It was deep, like I had to unfold it to see what it is. I was like, yeah, here it is right here. And he was like, all right, I'll be back. And then he just like, <laughs> just danced his ass away, you know what I mean? And I'm feeling bad now, cause I'm like, man, I don't miss dinner. I'm like, all right, we still gonna go to the movies, you know what I mean? We still, I'm out there breaking the ball, boom. People going around, talk, I'm talking to him a little bit, nervous as fuck. My dad come back 10 minutes later, hey man, you got that other 10? I was like, nah. <laughs> nah, I must have dropped that shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's like, all right, all right. I'll be back, you good, you good? And then he left, right? He left and I was like, man, it started to hit me like, man, I think my dad on drugs. Man, if he was on drugs, that'd be fucked up. Like, I'm about to miss a movie now. I done drove. <laughs> An hour? Damn, they ain't gonna get to see Adam's family values, you know what I mean? <laughs> I shoot a shot just as I miss, just as I airball it, you see the ball, uh, and I see the blue cougar just drive off. And I'm like, oh fuck. This nigga just left me in the projects <laughs> by myself. 
and the loneliness and the abandonment that came over me during that time fucked me up. Like, I'll never forget it. Life changing. Because that was a moment for me where someone was like, you got to do something with your life. You got to get the fuck out of here. Whoever's responsible for you is gone. It's up to you now. You got to do what the fuck you got to do to get out this situation. And I ain't have no self-esteem because he just took it to the pawn shop. <laughs> Cut to four years later. Partial basketball scholarship. And I'm selling crack, cocaine. Like 18 years old. And I ain't the best coke dealer, you know what I mean? Because the person, my OG keep calling, sending me on weird-ass jobs. Get a phone call like, hey, man, this chick wants some rocks, but she ain't got no money. So I want you to take her and let her suck your dick. I want you to give her two rocks. It's like, all right. I do that shit. <laughs> Fuck these junkies. But it was all out of anger, because my dad was a junkie, you know what I mean? So I ain't give a fuck about no other junkies out there. So I'm gonna get my dick sucked. In a Honda Accord. <laughs> behind a grocery store. And it's weird. It's weird, it's a weird moment. How the fuck did I get here? And it was even more weird for her. You know what I mean? She looked up, she was like, I'm sorry if I ain't doing a good job. <laughs> I don't even really suck dick, I'm a lesbian. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> Crack is addictive. <laughs> Crack is addictive. I thought it was on the person that smoked the crack. No, this shit gives a hold on you. That's a powerful ass drug. And I can't come. That's a tough situation. And I'm gonna tell you why, because when I looked up, it's a park right there. And at that park, in that basketball court, it's a father and son playing basketball. And I'm getting my dick sucked. And this Honda Accord trying not to cry. <laughs> but father and son playing goddamn basketball. That could have been my life. And I can't even look up or down. So I'm just looking out the window trying to find some inspiration so I can finish. And seeing that father and son play ball, I recognize something. That no matter how much money I made selling crack or how successful I got, I never could buy the thing that I wanted, which was the bond of a father and son together. And that was one of the last moments you know what I mean? That I decided to sell crack. I came though. <laughs> that was that was it, was that?